Let me read to you a passage from the 20th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 11 to 18. It's the Gospel for Easter Tuesday, Tuesday of the octave of Easter Sunday, year A. St. John writes, Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they've put him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener, and said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. That's John chapter 20, verses 11 to 18. And what does it suggest to us? Well, the gospel scene today is surely among the most beautiful scenes of the gospel. All is quiet, and Mary Magdalene is lingering outside the tomb, weeping. The body of Jesus has gone, presumably taken away. And there she is, with, we might say, a heart near to breaking. Jesus, her Lord and Master, had suffered and had died a terrible death and had been buried in the tomb. All this was mystery enough that such a thing had come to pass. But now his very body has gone. She looked again into the tomb and saw two persons inside seating where the body of Jesus had laid. They spoke to her, asking why she was weeping. They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. Her reply, incidentally, does not indicate astonishment on her part to see them there, perhaps because she was overwhelmingly preoccupied with the thought of Christ's missing body and could think of little else. She simply gave her answer. Her only thought was, who had taken him, and to where? Suddenly, she, knew, she saw near her another, perhaps the gardener, and she turned to him. He spoke, asking her the same question as had the two persons, angels, seated in the tomb. Woman, why are you weeping? Then he added a further question. Whom are you looking for? You know, at various times in the Gospels, our Lord asks questions of a person when he knows exactly what, he, what they want and what they need. He is drawing them out to present their petition. He wants us to ask him for what we need, all the while knowing what we need before we ask him. At the same time, our Lord is very human and even, I suggest, playful. I am convinced that we think too little of our Lord's smile and his laughter. I am sure that a smile played frequently on his face and that in his holy manner he laughed a lot. We see traces of it in some of his sayings. On one occasion, for instance, he warned against noticing the splinter in the other person's eye while not noticing the beam of wood in one's own. I am sure 
that sayings like this evoked peals of laughter in his audience, with himself smiling as he said it. Well, I like to imagine a smile and a twinkle in the eye of Jesus, of the risen Jesus, as he asked Mary his two questions. These two questions Christ asked of Mary Magdalene could be said to be the questions he asks of mankind down the ages. Why are you weeping? He wants us to tell him. He wants us to direct our petitions to him. Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, he said once, and I will give you rest. He is the one who takes us to the Father. He is the way, the truth and the life. The root cause of our sufferings and of our plight he has taken upon himself, namely sin. He, the Son of God, sinless, entered into solidarity with sinful man and by his death he expiated for the sin of the world. Why are you weeping? But there is also the second question which he directs to Mary and through her to all his brothers down the ages. Who are you looking for? He directs that all-important question to our heart. And he wants us to answer it with our gaze on the risen Jesus, just as Mary answered it with her gaze on the living Jesus. Master, she said, Rabuni, he, Jesus of Nazareth, risen from the dead, he who is the Lord and Master, he who is the Son of God made man and Redeemer of the world, he it is whom we are seeking. Our hearts were made for him. As St. Paul writes, before the world was made, God chose us, chose us in Christ to be holy and full of love in his sight. We were chosen in Christ. The holiness and love that we are called to live is attained through the person of Jesus. And this he works in us through the gift of His Holy Spirit. This too is obliquely alluded to in our Lord's ne next words. He is ascending to the Father, He tells Mary, and He directs her to go and tell this to the brothers. It may imply that having only just risen from the dead, He is now about to go to the Father. He wants the Apostles to know and he may be implying that he will soon return to bring them a great gift. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit whom he will confer on his apostles and that very evening he appears to the apostles as a group in the upper room and breathes on them the Holy Spirit, establishing them as the foundation of the church and empowering them for their mission and for their work of forgiving sins. It is an initial installment of what will be granted to the Church at Pentecost after his final ascension to the Father. Let us place ourselves in spirit outside the empty tomb with Mary and gaze with her on the smiling face of the risen Jesus. He is going to the Father. Together with the Father he will send the Holy Spirit to abide with the Church forever. By the power of His Holy Spirit, He too will remain with His Church to the very end, and He abides with us now. He is our source of hope, and is the hope of the world. So let us address Him from the heart as the Lord, the Lord and Master, and let us, let us live every day accordingly.